Hey everyone and welcome. We're coming to you live from the studio of the Journalism and Media Studies Center here at the University of Hong Kong. We hope this is where you plan to be, um, the information webinar for the Masters of Journalism program here at HKU. I'm the program director, Kevin Seitz. Now I have to say it's not unusual for me on a Saturday night to be sitting alone by myself on a couch, sometimes just watching Netflix, an episode of BoJack Horseman or El Chapo or something like that. But for some of our current students on my right and my fellow instructors, Diana Joe and Sharon Fast, and also uh, our hardworking colleagues in the control booth, waved everyone in there, guys. There you go. All of these people here for you tonight because of their dedication to the program so you can have the information that you need, first-hand information, what we in journalism call primary sources, to consider a decision that I can guarantee is going to change your life. Your dedication or rededication to a career in journalism. Now, the whole program is only going to take about an hour and I'll tell you how it's going to work. Um, the first part is going to be me doing the about us section. You know, what's the curriculum like here? What are the costs? What are the facilities like? And after that, I'm going to hand it off to my colleagues, uh, Diana and Sharon, and they're going to get into the mo more interesting section of the program, talking with our students, finding out what their experience is like, both uh, in studying the curriculum and going out and producing stories, their internships, or even what it's like to live in Hong Kong. And then finally, we want to hear from you. You in the chat room, what questions do you have for us, either the staff or the students? And our webmaster and hardworking, all-around good guy, Foon Lee, is in there. Hey, Foon, want to say hi to everybody? Um, he's going to be taking your questions along with our other colleagues, including Jason Hugh, our program executive. Many of you may have been in touch with him already in the admissions program uh, process. Our communications director, Jennifer Wang. Jennifer's in there as well. Um, Kevin Lau is our career strategist and also our development guy, uh, wearing lots of hats here in our, our small program. And then also um, behind the controls, uh, Carlock and our RT guy, Horace. Hey guys, you wanna wave and say hi? Everybody here, just where they wanna be on Saturday night. So we've got a lot to do and a little time. Uh, I'd like to get started, but first of all, I wanna welcome some of you. We've got people coming from all over the world tonight. Uh, to watch this program. And I just want to give a quick shout out to Meng Yu in Beijing, Cassandra out in Singapore, Carlotta at the United Arab Emirates, Irene in Irvine, California, Joseph in Australia, Chloe in Seattle, uh, Christopher in Philadelphia, a lot of people from the US tonight, uh, Chloe in Hangzhou, Annalisa in Shanghai, Iris in Hong Kong, Joshua in my hometown of Los Angeles, and Eurissa in Seoul. So uh, thanks for joining us tonight, guys, and we hope to hear from you a little bit later in the program. But for now, let's get started. And one of the things I always like to do uh, when we talk about the program is I'd like to show you the actual building itself. Um, we're in one of the, the most interesting buildings on campus, uh, the Journalism Media Center. Uh, it's Elliott Hall. And the Elliott Hall building uh, is kind of interesting because it's one of the oldest buildings on campus. Uh, it's a beautiful facade, a colonial looking structure. Uh, but what you don't know is all the neat and interesting things that are inside the building, like this studio, the high technology uh, kind of hidden in this beautiful colonial structure. But obviously, no program is about the building. It's about the people. You know, these are some of our students from the past, both undergraduate and graduate uh, students. Uh, and they are the people that make up the program. You know, they're the reason that we're here tonight. Um, you know, hopefully you can be a part of the class of 2019 and 2020. Now let me tell you um, about how we started. We're a fairly young program. We're only 20 years old. And the woman that you see on the screen right now, Ying Chan, um, is, we, we sometimes, she has a nickname Typhoon Ying because she's such a strong personality a kind of a force of will that got this program started through sheer determination 20 years ago. It was founded in 1999, and we've grown a lot since that time period. Uh, there was only a, a handful of students here, about a half a dozen, uh, and then in the next year, 20 to 25. Now we're up to 60 to 70 master students a year. 
uh, in a one-year full-time and two-year part-time program. We have nine full-time faculty, but lots of adjuncts. And the important thing about our faculty is that we're all, for the most part, still working journalists. You know, we believe in this career, we believe in the nobility of it, we believe in the purpose of it, uh, and so we haven't given it up. We, we love teaching, we love to hand off uh, the torch to the next generation of journalists, but we haven't gotten done practicing ourselves yet either, uh, as it shows there are 14 adjuncts uh, visiting professors. And then some of the reasons that we're unique, take a look at that beautiful skyline. This is Hong Kong, this is a global city, this is a place where things happen, it is the gateway to Asia. Uh, there's so much going on here right now on a regular basis in finance, in food, uh, in sports, in you know, almost anything that you can think of. It is a vibrant and very much a live city. And this is a place where you can find the stories that people would be talking about the next day. Now what's very important, and I want you to listen to me carefully when I say this, this program is about journalism. It's not about advertising. It's not about public relations. We don't teach those things here. Uh, I have nothing against them, um, you know, advocacy journalism, uh, advocacy communications, it's a whole different uh, field. What we teach you here is to become journalists. We feel the world right now needs good journalists to tell the truth, to seek and report the truth in a world that in some ways is very confused about what the truth is. We have politicians talking about fake news, uh, coverage that they don't like. We actually have fake news occurring. In, by trolls um, working the internet and spreading uh, false information. So all of these things that are happening right now, we feel make it a really good time to be a journalist. And if you're dedicated to the truth, this is the place to be. One of the uh, just as interesting things uh, as the classes that you take here are the people that you meet. And in some ways, uh, your colleagues, your classmates are part of your learning experience here. Uh, just like all of you are tuning in from all over the world tonight, um, in many cases we have MJ uh, uh, cohorts that are made up of students from 19 different countries, sometimes more than that. I think our, our current cohort is from about a dozen different countries and people from all over Asia, the United States and Europe. And that kind of experience is something that you can't replicate anywhere. By the time that you're done here, you're not only learning the journalism that you need to practice and to become uh, a skilled practitioner, but you also have contacts from around the world, people that you know, uh, not just classmates, but friends that you can work with and, and uh, actually uh, see some of the world after you're done with the program. So, you know, those are some of the reasons that we're actually unique, but there's a lot of other things uh, about the program as well um, that we think are important. And if I can actually uh, get my technology to work here, which is always uh, can be tricky for us, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and advance this. We like to call um, the, uh, the education that we have in the MJ program a three-star education experience. Excellence in teaching, um, excellence in practical experience and excellent in career prospects. It's kind of like uh, you know, the Michelin rating systems. You're not eating a great meal, but you're having a, a great experience in terms of, of the education that you get here. And that becomes very important uh, in the whole process. Um, also, uh, you'll hear our students talk about this a little bit later, uh, career prospects. You know, we're not teaching you these things just so you can take the knowledge, even though knowledge is its own reward. We want you to go out and we want you to work in the field. We want you to be good journalists, uh, taking what you've learned here and bringing it to established media organizations or freelancing on your own, telling the stories that are important for the world to hear right now. Um, I told you, you know, the most important thing here in our program is our students, the people that are coming to take the program. And we learn as much from them as they learn from us. Um, they come from all over the world. Uh, you can look at the, the chart that we have up right now. Uh, the majority of our students come from mainland China at this point. Um, about 22% come from the international regions around the world, Europe, the US, um, other parts of Asia as well and about 12% in Hong Kong. Uh, this gives you, you know, uh, certainly a rich diversity of, of different people to meet and know here and to learn from. And one of the things that's really interesting here is that 
you know, we also have faculty from all over the world too. You're not just getting a single journalism experience here. You're not getting just a Western model or just an Asian model. You're getting people that are, are bringing different breaths of experience from all over the world. Um, and because there are many different ways to do this job as long as it's about seeking and reporting the truth. Uh, you see some pins on the map there that give you uh, many of the different locations of our students, uh, past and present. Our faculty, let's talk about that. Uh, Award-winning, experienced journalists. Uh, if you can name an award, one of the major awards uh, that have, is given out for journalism, there's probably a member of our faculty that has won them. And like I said earlier, uh, we're not just uh, teaching anymore. We're also still practicing the profession. We believe in it. We believe that it is a noble profession. Uh, and the fact is, we can't teach you with the kind of confidence that we need to teach you if we're not still working in the field, if we're not ourselves still making videos, still making documentaries, uh, still writing uh, for newspapers and online publications. All of those things happen here. And this is a, a you know, kind of a, a good uh, thumbnail version of some of the, the staff that we have here and lots of other adjuncts bringing their experiences uh, to the program as well. So now one of the big questions that you probably have is what will you learn here? Now we've taken a, a really serious look at the program in the last couple of years and we've made some big changes in this last year. In fact, the students that are sitting with me here today are really kind of the beta version of the core focused curriculum that we brought into practice this year. We decided that as a smaller journalism program, we can't offer dozens and dozens of different courses that aren't critical to your journalism uh, career. And so we focused on creating um, a really uh, core focused curriculum that looks at three critical skill areas. Um, and also in using different teaching techniques, um, kind of adapting ourselves to the way that you learn. One of the things that we realized is that today's students are visual learners. It's not just about us sitting uh, in the classroom and, uh, and actually you know, telling you things uh, through a lecture over and over again. That's part of the process, but also innovative teaching techniques in using videos uh, to reinforce the skills that we're teaching. Um, and also, you know, say you miss a class or, or you're not certain um, what the instructor uh, you know, was telling you, you can go back and you can look at some of the video library that we have that reinforces these core skills. And let's take a look at it. We've got a, a couple of videos that we can show you right now that, uh, that give you an idea of, of the core focus skills that we have. What's up everybody, AJ here, and today we're gonna to show you how to set up your GH4 camera for full auto video recording. Now, to set up the scenario, let's imagine your buddy, let's call him Roy, gives you back your camera with all the settings messed up and you have a shoot to do in a couple of minutes. Uh, what do you do to get your settings back in check and you don't have time to put it in full manual? Um, what do you do? It's easy, I'll show you how to do it in six to seven easy steps. Step one, turn on the camera and put it into the movie and mode. Step two, open up the LCD screen and make sure. Okay, so what you were looking at there was AJ, one of our instructors, um, going through the camera setup that we have here, the DSLR that we use uh, in teaching the video course. Uh, and we have a whole library of those kind of videos that can be very helpful for you. Uh, we, we use them as previews to what we teach in the classroom and we use them to reinforce the lessons as well. Uh, but what I want to talk to you about now, which I think is really important, is that core focused curriculum and what you can expect when you uh, actually come to the JMSC. Now, we've identified what we think are the three major skills that you need to know to be a professional journalist. We consider those reporting and writing, digital and data, and visual and audio. We want you to have a full year of each of those skills. Now, in the first semester, you don't have a lot of choice. We want you to take the basics in all three of those skills areas. So you have to take news reporting and writing, uh, if you are actually coming from a career in journalism and you have experience in, in that already, there's the potential of actually testing out of that. But if you don't, if you're even coming from a undergraduate program in journalism or no experience whatsoever, you have to take that class. That gives you the basics, the fundamentals. 
digital and data. Um, all journalism is digital today in terms of our news gathering and in terms of our news delivery. We want you to be skilled on the web to actually be able to build a website that will archive all of your work and be used as a portfolio by the time you finish this program. And finally, uh, visual and audio. Um, if you're not telling stories in three dimensions, if you're not using video, if you're not using audio, you're basically illiterate today. This is a major part of our communications program. This is something that you have to be able to do. And we know today uh, in the field, because we're still working in it, that when you go to work for a media organization, they're going to ask you to do all of these things. They're going to want you to be able to write uh, actual text copy. They're going to want you to be able to take a photograph, a still photograph. They're going to want you to be able to build a website or at least use a content management system to upload stories and images to the website. And they're going to want you to be able to shoot video and still photography and possibly even record audio out there uh, for radio or for podcasting. Now those classes you have to take in the first semester. In the second semester, we still want you to have a grounding in those key skills, but now in the second semester you have choices. For reporting and writing, it's no longer the basic class. You have the choice of taking covering China, reporting global affairs, long-form feature writing, global financial journalism. So it's not exactly specialization, but it allows you to continue uh, with the writing skill, but now in a, an area of focus that is of your interest. If you're really interested in covering China, which a lot of our students actually come to the program for, then you can do it. If you want to flex those writing muscles, uh, do more long form feature writing, that's an opportunity for you as well. Uh, business journalism, global financial journalism, it is one of the sure money makers uh, in the career of journalism. A lot of people uh, pursue that program here and getting a good grounding in that is, a, is a, uh, something that you might want to consider. In terms of digital and data, um, so you've learned to build websites, you've learned social media analytics in the first semester. Where do you want to go with that? Where do you want to take it? Uh, some journalists want to be data journalists. They want to work with um, technical manuals. They want to work with, with documentation coming out of government. They want to look at um, you know, annual reports from businesses, and they want to search that information find the story in it and present it to an audience. Uh, that's something that you can do um, with social media analytics uh, and data journalism that we teach here, research methods for media studies, um, and then social media analytics. You know, it, it's no longer enough for us just to cover the story, um, to write it, to produce it, to put it up online, to have people watch it. We also have to know who's watching why they're watching, what their interest is. We have to be aware of who our consumers are. Uh, back when I first started in journalism, this was considered heresy. You know, we didn't need to know. We just did the work and we put it out there. Now it's really important for us to understand who our audience is. Not to pander them, pander to them, but to be able to provide good information, to know what they're looking for. Uh, the more that we know about them, the better that we can provide communication and good information that's going to help them be aware of their world. Finally, in the visual and audio area, this is where it can get really interesting for you. If you enjoyed video news production, you can continue that uh, in the same vein, short, uh, short form video production in terms of backpack journalism. It's a course that I teach here, which is really about being a self-reliant journalist. Everything that you can carry in your backpack is what you use to produce the story. You're not relying on other people. You're not really relying on you know, lots of, of technology. It's really the basics, uh, getting to that core uh, you know, practice of journalism. It's you and the source, you and the story. Uh, say you want to take a different, uh, uh, different path. Uh, you can look at documentary production, which is fantastic as well. And if you decide to pursue that, you can uh, learn under our uh, Oscar-winning instructor, Ruby Yang, um, who actually teaches that class. Say that you're, you're not so much interested in video anymore, that uh, you know, using the cameras was, was difficult or tiresome for you. We still want you to understand the video process, and you can take documentary appreciation. You're not necessarily shooting in that class, but you're learning um, you know, what, what the shots are, what they communicate, what does a high shot um, relate to a viewer, what does a low shot relate to a viewer. Um, all the different kind of techniques and functions that a, um, a filmmaker might use to communicate to their audience. Photojournalism, 
And uh, a new class that we're offering uh, coming up, well, actually, this semester is podcasting and then writing and uh, production for TV news, which is more studio-based work. So all of those things. You know, the basic idea of this is that we really looked at the curriculum. We wanted to make sure that in the short period of time that we have to teach you, which is only one year, not even one year, I'm sorry, nine months, two semesters, uh, we want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence to make sure that you know what you're doing you know, when you leave our doors. Um, I, I've got to you know, disabuse you of the notion that when you leave here, you're going to be a master journalist. You are not. Um, it takes years to really master these skills. You'll have a master's in journalism degree, but I'm still learning every day. I've been at this job for 30 years, um, practicing a, as a journalist, and I'm still learning every time I do a story. So uh, that's the idea here, is we're gonna expose you to these skills, you're gonna practice these skills, you're gonna have the essential skills that you need to do the job, but it's gonna be up to you to master them and to continue to learn as you go on in your career. So let's move forward a little bit. Here's one of the things that a lot of you wanna know uh, on the job training and internships. Uh, when you get a chance to talk to our students in a, a short bit of time, um, once I I end up with uh, finishing up this, this part of our program. They'll tell you uh, about the interim that they experience doing internships between our fall and spring semesters. Now it's not required, but we do uh, certainly recommend it for you. And we have internships uh, that take place both in Hong Kong and internationally. Uh, this is a chance for you to take out some of the skills that you learned in the first semester and go and work for organizations like this, BBC, NBC, Thomson Reuters, Time, AFP, um, all of these different organizations, including local media, RTHK, and so on. Um, you'll get a chance, if you're aggressive enough, to get bylines, to actually do stories for these organizations while really only having one semester of our master's program under your belt. Now, in many cases, um, our students come back, and this is the decision point for them. Once they've had the experience of the internship, they decide, yes, this is the career for me, or no, this isn't quite right, because they get the real world experience before they're finished with the actual program. We want you to know. We want you to know if you want to do this job or not. We want you to know before you walk in our doors, um, because it's a difficult program. Um, we'll make no bones about that. It takes a lot of work to actually complete this program. It, it's not an, an easy degree to achieve. Um, and we wouldn't be doing our due diligence if we didn't make it as hard as we could for you. But we also are going to make you more competitive than anyone else out there. And I'm not just saying that. The facts back it up. When you look at our, our graduates, almost all of them get jobs in either journalism or communications. Uh, we've got great placement here. We have career strategists that can help you out in doing that. Sometimes the internship that you did in between the two semesters here turns into a job itself. Uh, this is just a, a quick pie chart showing you of, of you know, where our students are going. 38% into journalism in 2017, 12% uh, in media of, of some type. Um, but all of them, you know, finding purchase out there in the, in the um, you know, in a, in a good career path in, in communications. Uh, these are some of the faces that go with the jobs. I hate to talk in the abstract. These are the people that, are, that have graduated from our program are working for places like Initium, SCMP, RTHK, TVB, all local Hong Kong medium. Uh, here's some big names that you certainly will recognize. The New York Times, Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal. Um, what's interesting to note here is that we love when our, our graduates you know, go on to these marquee media organizations, but we also encourage them to come back. Uh, you'll see you know, in the, the photographs right here, Eva Tam, who was working at the Wall Street Journal. She's wearing the yellow blazer there. Uh, she now is teaching for us here at the uh, Masters of Journalism program at the JMSC. Also, Diana Joe, who, you'll, who you met earlier and who you'll be talking to in a few minutes, also came from the Wall Street Journal, but Eva graduated from our program. So we're, we're having these people come back and share their experiences once they go out and work in the field. Also, lots of opportunities from mainland China. If you're from mainland China, these are where our graduates are going. CCTV, Phoenix TV, uh, Six Tone, which is a great publication, BBC, um, all of those outlets. Um, 
What I want to share with you now, uh, you know, I can talk until I'm blue in, face, in, blue in the face about this, and, and I don't want to do that. I want you to hear from the people that are actually, that have gone through the program. Um, and sometimes it's our alumni that, it, that tell the story best. So let me sh show you a short clip of one of our alumni that's currently working at Bloomberg and how uh, the program actually helped her. In her When I was starting out and doing my MJ, uh, you know, I was still a really green reporter. Definitely loved talking to so many people, learning so many things at my day job. In the evenings when I would do, would go to school, it was really great to be in a classroom with teachers who were at the top of their craft, students who were really interested in learning, you know, just, just the same things that I did. It was really a great experience in order to learn what it means to be a journalist, but also a lot of the different skills required to be a journalist today. So I can't think of a more important time for there to be quality journalism out there globally. There is a lot of different data information that gets released that I think needs examination, needs a second look, and really needs interpretation to our readers, to the world, on what's going on. As an alumni of the program, I still feel very connected to the JMSC community, and I'm very proud to see the program continue to thrive and produce such engaging, dedicated, and curious reporters. The JMSC really strengthened my resolve to pursue a career in financial journalism. I really believe that financial journalists are at a prime place to really understand how the world works by following the money. Hong Kong is such an important place to be doing that sort of work because with all the money coming in and out of China, which is rising to be the biggest economy, biggest story of our time, it's been a privilege to really have the front seat to all of that happening. Because the JMSC has such a strong career program, they put me in touch with quite a lot of editors in town that were looking for good, keen candidates. And one of the editors I met was at Bloomberg, who ended up introducing me to my future boss, um, who headed up. Okay, that was one of our alumni um, telling you a little bit about her experiences on the job. And again, that, those are stories that, that really tell about the program you know, so much more uh, than I can tell you, um, you know, how they're taking their skills out into the field and actually doing the job out there. And there are a lot of opportunities beyond the classroom here at the JMSC. Uh, like I said, you'll be able to teach with marquee instructors like Ruby Yang, an Oscar winner uh, from her documentary work. Um, but also lots of great guest speakers coming in from all over the world to tell you about their experiences, uh, about their jobs, and how, you know, at some point they got started just like you. You know, we also bring in uh, journalists in residence to write their books here on our campus at the JMSC building. You know, we want them here for a lot of reasons. We want it to be a hub of creativity, almost like a shared workspace, but we also want our students to be able to interact with them, a journalist actually writing a book. What's, what is that like? You know, and that's a, um, an ambition that you have for your life. You'll be able to see people doing that in process. Um, and, and, and speaking with these, these talented journalists that have covered some of the most important and poignant events in our human history. Uh, you will work very hard in this program. Um, our students will, will, I'm sure, affirm that. Uh, in some cases, they, they feel it, it can be you know, extremely difficult. Uh, but we feel it's important to work you hard. We want you to realize that this is the place for you to learn, but also the place for you to make your mistakes. When you go out in the, in the real world, we want you to perform at the peak of your game. Uh, and it's our responsibility to make sure you're up to it. You know, we, we protect this profession. You know, we think it is very important and very noble, and we want to make sure that if we're going to put our name on your degree, that you've earned it and you're able to do the job. So yeah, you're going to work very hard, um, and you'll also have some fun. Uh, sometimes it's in the classroom, sometimes it's out of the classroom, uh, but again, you know, meeting all these wonderful, wonderful people from all over the world can be very enriching. Uh, all right, let's get down to some nitty gritty, and I just want to do this fairly quickly. What are the costs of actually doing this program? Um, it's not, uh, you know, a, a necessarily overly expensive program. When you compare it to cost of uh, a journalism program um, in the United States or in Europe, some of those programs, Columbia or my, uh, my alma mater, Northwestern, cost as much as eighty to $100,000 a year now. 
our program, and I would certainly hold it up to any program anywhere in the world. Um, you know, cost a fraction of that. For non-local students, it's about 25,000 US. For local students, even less than that, 21,000. This isn't in insubstantial. This is, you know, certainly a lot of money. But when you, you know, think about this investment in your career and what you'll be able to do with this, this is a life-changing experience. And it is not going to leave you in debt for the first five or 10 years of your career. Um, you may have a little bit of debt in the program, or, or maybe if you've saved up some money already, you'll be able to pay it off. But you're not going to come out of here owing, you know, sixty or eighty thousand um, dollars. You know, you don't make a ton of money in journalism right off the bat. Um, sometimes you never do. Uh, we do this for love, not necessarily for money. But you know, it is also a very good value for your dollar. And I'll put up our education, you know, against any program anywhere for a lot more money. Um, there are scholarships available. We don't have a ton of them. Um, some of them are for need, some of them are for merit, um, but you can certainly talk to Jason about that and see what's available that you might be able to, to look into. Um, here are some dates for you to remember. If you are going to apply, you know, be sure to mark these down, and these are also on our website. You don't have to, to write them down here um, if you don't have pen and paper, but you can also check them on our website. Application deadline, 31st of January. That's coming up fairly soon. And it's important for you to meet that deadline so we can look at your, um, your application and, and give it the kind of you know, good study that we want um, before our ma making a decision whether to either fast track you for an interview or have you take the application test. The qualifying exam is the 16th of February. Uh, we have redesigned the exam, so it's very interesting at this point where it, uh, it actually contains uh, videos and photographs for you to identify uh, both newsmakers and news events and why they're in the news. Um, we spent a lot of time trying to create questions that let us know what aptitude that you have for journalism. You may or may not have journalism experience. We're not so concerned about that. But do you have the aptitude to do journalism? Um, a journalist has a certain type of characteristic to them. Um, I'm not going to tell you what they are because we're testing for it. And if you have it, um, we'll know. And if you don't, you should probably know that for yourself. You know, a journalist has to be aware of what's going on in the world. Uh, we'll do uh, the interviews uh, February through March, and you know, we make it a point to interview you individually, each and every one of our applicants. Um, last year, you know, we got a great crop of students. Um, it's because we talked to every single one of them. They all deserve to be here. Some of them had experience, some of them didn't, but they all had what it takes to be part of the program. And we'll find that out through the interviews. If you get past the admission application, if you get past the qualifying exam, then you've got the interview, and we'll really know if you belong here. But not only that, you'll know if um, we're right for you. We want you to be right for us, but we, we, want you, uh, we want us to be right for you as well. And you'll only know that by talking to us. And we'll make the offers in March. So that's all those things. Um, here are some, uh, some addresses for you. Our, our website, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all of those things, they're updated fairly frequently. You'll hear from alumni. You'll hear from staff on those things. Uh, the website has all the information for admissions. So um, that's the About Us section. Now let's swap out of this, have Diana and Sharon come back in and meet our students, talk a little bit more about the real experience of the program here at JMSC. Hey, guys. The couch is yours. Everyone. Um, my name is Sharon Fuss. I'm the Deputy Director of the Master's of Journalism program. I'm also the Friendly Neighborhood Lecturer in Media Law uh, and the Resident Canadian in the faculty. To my right, uh, my colleague Diana Joe. Diana lectures in video news production. Uh, and to the right of Diana, we have uh, three representative students with us this evening. Um, Eleanor, Brendan, and Lancy we invited you here, maybe on the premise of a friendly discussion, but actually, we want you to handle all the hard questions. So, <laughs> thanks for coming. Um, but I'll start with something soft. Um, if each of you could just take a moment and tell the audience who you are and what brought you to the JMSC. 
Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Eleanor and I come from Hong Kong. So actually before studying this MJ program, I have already completed my undergraduate studies and I was majoring in English. So I think it's during that period of time I decided that I really want to work in the media industry and I really want to become a responsible journalist in the future. But I lack the skill. So um, then I decided to apply for this MJ program and then here I am and I'm more than happy to share my experience with you, all of you tonight. All right, hey guys, um, I'm Brandon. So I'm originally from the US, uh, specifically North Carolina. And uh, before this program, I was actually living and working in mainland China as an academic consultant. I was helping kids get into college in the US. And uh, for the longest time, um, I've always wanted to be a journalist. Um, I Actually, my undergraduate majors were Chinese and Spanish. Um, but I wanted to work as a journalist, um, specifically in Asia, in China. And uh, when I visited Hong Kong for the first time, I fell in love with the city, and I knew this is where I wanted to study. So um, I came here uh, right after living in uh, Nanjing and Shanghai for a few years. Um, well, hello everyone. My name is Lancy, and I come from main Thailand, uh, mainland of China. I graduated from MUC, also known as Mingzhu University of China. I specialized in Chinese language and literature. I have never received any professional journalism training before, but I worked as an internship in Tencent News and the Wall Street Journal before. Also, this experience strengthened my desire to become a journalist and also brought me here, JMSC. Uh, Thanks a lot for JMSC for the invitation. It's really a great honor to be here to share the experience to the future students. And I believe that we will have a great night here. Great. Thank you. Um, so I guess I will ask the first question. Um, so Kevin gave us a really good uh, ins and outs of the program. So I want to ask you as students, what, what were some, some of your expectations, expectations and what were some of your actual experience uh, for the first semester? Well, like for me, you know, like as I just mentioned, I actually did my undergraduate in English studies. So uh, beforehand when I study, actually my professor tell me that, oh, you're going to work on an essay about uh, like Shakespeare or Charles Dickens. And the topic is really like fixed it. But in here, in JMSC, I am actually really surprised by the amount of freedom that this course gave to us. Like for example, for the video production course, like I, I need to film like four videos. And the topic is actually decided by a student. Like whatever topic you want to talk about, you want to interview what kind of people, it's all your decision. So I'm really surprised by the amount of freedom. And I feel like it's what journalists need to do because in the future, journalists need to to take the active position to find a new source and I think is one thing that surprised me and one thing that I'm really impressed about this course. Yeah, and, and for me, um, one of my major expectations, and definitely the expectations were met, is I wanted practical experience. Um, you know, during, I'm sure a lot of people can, uh, you know, sympathize. Uh, during your undergraduate career, you find a lot of the courses you take are very theoretical. Um, but I wanted to actually learn what it was like to work as a journalist, hands on, and that's what I got here. Um, and I also wanted to be, um, you know, capable of working as a journalist in all sorts of mediums. So uh, my last semester, actually, I was taking a broadcast journalism course and uh, beyond that I was taking reporting and writing and also learning how to work in the digital realm as well and um, those expectations for sure were met and you know like Eleanor was saying is that you also have a lot of flexibility and freedom uh, when you're working when you are working on your assignments um, so even though that you're learning new skills you could definitely go out and you know pitch an idea and um, I think that's one really amazing thing about it is that you can really do just about anything um, yeah, well, just like what I said, I really like this job, most because this job's most uh, attracting part is that I can get in touch with totally different person and world all the time. And actually, I want to know more about this world and know more about myself. So I came to GMSC and that really met my expectation. I met a lot of different friends and from different cultures here. Hong Kong is also in really international cities and uh, I think that's really helped me a lot in my career. So. I want to um, just dig a little bit deeper on something that you raised, Brendan, which is level of experience and exposure and um, exposure to professional environments. So can you, can you say a little bit about um, your past experience in journalism? Did you have any or did you have professional experience elsewhere? And 
Um, how did you find adjusting to the program if you didn't have that professional experience? So, um, I don't have any experience, or I didn't have any experience as a journalist before starting the program. Um, but with that said, um, in the industry I was working in prior, a lot of the skills that I gained were transferable. So before, um, as I mentioned prior, I was working as an academic consultant or counselor. So I would meet with a lot of students. Um, we would conduct interviews, mock interviews for universities. I would help with essay writing. So in terms of the editorial experience, um, that helped a lot um, You know, for my journalistic career career now. Um, but, um, you know, if you don't have journalism experience, um, that shouldn't be a deterrent, uh, first and foremost, is that, um, yes, the program is challenging, and yes, it's fast, um, but the professors and the, um, you know, the everyone here is here to help you every step of the way. Um, like, I, I feel like I've grown so much in the five months that I've been here, and it's amazing how before I would say um, I'm aspiring to be a journalist or I'm a student journalist, but now, especially during my internship, I feel comfortable enough saying that, hi, my name's Brandon, I'm a journalist, I have a question for you. So, um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, despite the, um, the time limits, uh, you learn a lot. And Eleanor, you come from a very strong editorial background. Um, can you speak a little bit about what it was like to take on these more technical subjects? Well, like, to be honest, actually during the admission interview that I, I had, like, to, when I want to apply to this MJ class, I actually told my interviewer, Mr. Like, uh, Professor Fu King Wah, I told him that I really want to become a newspaper journalist. I want to, like, dedicate all my career to, like, writing newspaper. But then after taking uh, this MJ program and undertaking the video shooting class, the video news production class, I feel like I'm starting to develop an obsession in taking video so that I'm now deciding whether should I, you know, start exploring becoming a video journalist or a TV journalist at the same time. Right. Actually, for most of us, we don't have the background of journalism. And actually, we also have the different experience in this area. But most of us are really feeling a lot about the video productions here. That's a really challengeable classes. Yeah, I want to um, you know, touch on that. The video production class is such an intensive course. And we design in a way where we can meet people with no prior experience and people with some experience. So. A lot of our class were trying to give uh, storytelling and editorial and also technical aspects in this one class. I want to know from you guys what your experience is in the video production course, and uh, you know maybe you guys could could share some of the challenges. Uh, and to prepare for the students for this very intensive. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe the video production is the hardest things I've been through <laughs> this program. Uh, actually, for me, I didn't have any journalism background, and I didn't even touch the camera before I came to JMSC. That's the truth. And I still remember when I first. Uh, uh, the first time I need to interview a stranger and I was really shy, I don't know what to do. Uh, if he say, he, he say no to me, this is kind of like the embarrassing time I've been through. And uh, also, but finally I made it. That is the really thing, uh, things I feel surprised. Uh, basically, uh, because of the help from my teachers and the friends, and also there are lots of tough nights we have been going through that. <laughs> Yeah. The, the VMP class, it was a lot of fun, but for sure it was one of the most challenging for me. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges that um, you would meet is if you don't speak Cantonese, um, you have a lot of setbacks. Um, I remember um, for one of the stories I was working on, I really wanted to interview um, people who are working in industries that are dying in Hong Kong. So I decided to check out the, uh, the snake restaurants and I really wanted to get some footage. Um, so actually I did. I, I met this one really nice lady. She even held a snake and she asked me if I wanted to hold it. Um, luckily it didn't bite me. <laughs> um, but uh, there was the language barrier. Uh, so that's one of the harder parts is you really want to get a story. You have everything um, in mind, what you want to ask. Uh, but then you realize, especially with video news production or in journalism in general, is that things don't always go as planned. And sometimes the story doesn't always go as planned. And then, and then you're finding out that you, know, you have a brand new story 
story idea, or maybe you just learn something about the city or the people that you're speaking with, and then it just changes direction. That's fine. And I think that's um, you know a, a core skill um, to be a journalist or really anything else in your life is to definitely be fluid and be open-minded to uh, new experiences or you know new stories. <laughs> Doctor, I feel like it's so fun to be on the other side, seeing all the places that you guys have gone out mm -hmm. and brought back to us. Uh, and a lot of people really take that opportunity to, you know, go to Macau to do this bungee <laughs> jumping thing, or you know, visit a farm or a snake shop. And it can be really fun. Also, it's you know, it's it's a very important tool uh, and skill to have if you're looking for a job in journalism. Um, and, and if you happen to interview the bungee jumping guy, he'll give you a 30% discount, <laughs> just so you know. That is the most things that we are here and we are always getting out of the comfort zones. Mm -hmm. yes. So let's talk a little bit about how you find sources, um, particularly if you're not from Hong Kong. You mentioned it was a bit of a challenge um, in not being able to speak Cantonese. How have you got around that? How have you confronted that challenge about the language barrier and finding the stories? Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, a story that you did where you confronted that and were able to get around those issues? Great. So um, I guess just going back to uh, the snake restaurant, I, I think you know what's most important is just uh, you know use your connections. I mean, we're all of course you know colleagues, but we're also friends, and um, many of us are from Hong Kong and. You know, I, I just reach out to my local friends like, hey, um, I'm going to go to this snake restaurant next week. You want to come and join? Like, I'll, I'll treat you for a meal. I'll buy you a bubble tea, whatever. And sure that's... That <laughs> I, I feel like you'd be less popular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just bribe your friend. No, I'm kidding. But uh, yeah, just, um, you know, if you ever find yourself in that situation when, you're not, you, when you can't speak the language or um, if you're just running out of ideas, just go online. I, I think you know being able to Google or Baidu is uh, a very crucial source as well. Um, go on Twitter. Um, you know, in our one of our courses, we learn how Twitter is really just one of the central um, tools that you use as a journalist, and you can find stories and contacts that way. Great barrier for me coming from the mainland. It's really hard to understand, but also just like uh, just like Brandon said, uh, English is really common in, uh, in Hong Kong here, and actually you can find a lot of different information online. And also you need to uh, get out of your comfort zone to find different sources and to get more in touch with the different persons. So. You guys just, you know, one of what makes this program really unique is that you do an uh, internship in the beginning, uh, in the middle of first and second semester, and you guys, most of you have just finished that. Uh, so I want to hear a little bit about your internship experience. Uh, well, I just finished my internship in Forbes, and uh, that is a really reputable uh, business magazine. Uh, I'm really pleasured to be there, and uh, I met lots of different uh, kinds of journalists and the professional journalism environment there. Uh, actually, they have shown a lot of uh, professionalism and also the kindness to me that I really appreciate that. Uh, it's kind of like a soldier on the training ground, and the first came into the barrier <laughs> on the barrier field for the first time. Uh, I helped them with the 30 under 30 Asia list and also some profiles about some candidates. And also I just finished my byline last week about the Chinese real estate uh, market. So that's a really good experience for me. I think I learned no less than what I learned in class. And um, yeah, for me, I actually, uh, I finished my internship yesterday as well. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. We finished our internships on Friday and we're going back to school Monday. But um, I, I interned at court. And first, I got to say that if you want to write and if you want bylines, apply to courts. Um, I ended up finishing with nine bylines. And um, the experience was great. Um, the internship coordinator, she was very helpful. Um, I learned so much uh, throughout the span of that six weeks. Um, you know, one, one thing that I really liked about the internship is that it gives you the opportunity to do a lot of good. 
Um, one story in particular that I've been following and writing on was regarding a refugee uh, from Saudi Arabia. Um, so you can always look that up if you have the time. But um, I became really emotionally involved in that story. And um, that was like the moment that I knew that I really want to continue this work. I want to be a journalist because I had the opportunity to you know, make the world know uh, about central issues that could really help save, one's li save someone's life. Obviously, I didn't save anyone's life, but you know, we're all playing a small role to really do that. Um, and beyond that, uh, I learned how to be more timely. I learned how to focus. Uh, I'm ADD, so I have a really hard time sitting down. Um, but through a courts internship, I was really, um, they were really strict with me, but uh, you know, it was worth it. And I think I grew tremendously as a journalist and as a young professional as well. Nine lines, lines might, might, might be a record, record. so we'll have to look that up. That's quite, that's enormous. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. So, then again, the, some of them were shared, um, I got to say. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was amazing, really good experience. Eleanor, tell us about your internship. Okay, so for me, I actually interned at Thomson Reuters last month. And although I only worked there for a relatively short period of time, I actually get the chance to attend different of court hearings during my internship. And to me, I feel like this kind of experience is really valuable because um, I get to actually harness the skill that I learned from the reporting and writing class and into the newsroom. I learned how to do the note taking, I know how to report accurately, and I, I know how to do the interview, how to interview the lawyers especially. So I feel like this uh, internship experience really helped me a lot to become a responsible journalist in the future. Was that your first time to, to attend, attend a court, court in Hong Kong? Hong Kong? Yeah. Yes, I actually, I only, you know, see the, you know, the lawyers TV show before, <laughs> but now I attend the court. I actually thought it's going to be very boring at first, but then um, actually under my editor's guidance, he told me that I don't need to actually note down everything that the, the lawyer and the judge said, but I actually need to look for the sound bite. Like, is there any emotional sound bite the witnesses give? And what does the, when one witness is talking about something, what is um, what is um, being the people being brought prosecuted? What is their emotional, you know, the facial expression? And I feel like it's kind of um, an interesting thing to know in Hong Kong court. And you and went, went to, to uh, a court, court case, case, case that was, was very heavily, heavily attended, attended by the media. Yeah, um, what was that experience like being in the courtroom with um, dozens of other journalists fighting for space? I, I feel like uh, for me, I actually attend. For very early. I need to get the best seat because I don't want to sit in the back and then I actually, okay, I'm going to sit there. And then I feel like uh, when you actually attend the court hearings with other journalists, they're going to give you some advice and um, opinion. For example, when some lawyers are talking about um, a, a document that is actually confidential to them, but then actually outside the court, other journalists will actually keep on and asking about that document. They are fighting for the truth. What are they talking about? Can you actually give us the document to see what are you talking about? And then I feel like it's a very valuable experience for me to see how the journalists are actually fighting for the truth. And I feel like it's a um, very valuable experience for me. I hate to interrupt, guys. I'm going to insert myself back in here. Um, <laughs> listening to you all talk, oh, it makes my heart proud. You know, you're talking so passionately about the profession already. Uh, and it just makes us realize, you know, you're not selling insurance, you're not working in a bank, you know, you're doing jobs that have impact, that impact people's lives. So it's great to hear that emotion in you and, and, and the pride as well. Um, we want to take it outside to our chat room. We've got people that, that want to know more. Um, hey, Foon. Hello. What, what kind of questions do we have out there for our students or our faculty? Okay, so I got a question from Robin. So he's asking what have you enjoyed the most about the program so far? So maybe Eleanor can help answering the question. Hey, Eleanor, can you answer a question from Robin? She wants to know what you enjoy the most from the program so far. Well, I, what I enjoy the most about this program so far, I guess I have to say is still the video news production class because um, I feel like it's really a challenging class because you get to you know reach for your source and actually and then you need to carry your heavy tripod and then camera to the site to take the video and you need to prepare your interview question well and the whole production thing because you're like a one-man band you do it at first to the end to the production part and then I feel like you're actually giving out like you know nurturing a baby's out and I feel like this kind of like feeling is make me so proud and then 
it for me like the four videos that I took, I actually treated my little babies in this <laughs> JMS course, and I feel like yeah, it's it's a very hot. And, and some, some of those babies, babies, Eleanor, made it all the way to publication. Yeah. yeah. For one video, I actually interviewed some pole dancers in Hong Kong, and actually, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pole dancers in Hong Kong, and actually under like Professor Sai's help and also um, and also uh, the teachers' help, I actually get the video published to Hong Kong Free Press, and that made me is a very rewarding experience for me as well. And I feel like I have to say that this course is really hard and challenging, but it's also very rewarding at the same time, and you will not regret it. That's a good question for you guys as well. Uh, I think the most enjoyed part for me is that I saw lots of different choices for me in my life. That I not only met lots of different persons here, but I also see lots of possibilities in my future. Uh, just like I, 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 I want to be a journalist at first, but now I want to touch more different choice in my in the future just like in different area i want to know long about the politics know more about economics this things i have never thought that i would touch before but now here i thought there are lots of person that have the same targets same as you you can exchange the minds with them exchange the ideas with them uh, this is really a rapid speed to grow up yeah, I guess I can say the same thing. So um, one is this program is extremely international. You make friends from all over the world. Um, I think that's what's um, one of the most rewarding aspects of this program is you just meet people from you know places that you know you, you would never expect. If I stayed you know in North Carolina, I love my home state by the way. But if I stayed, I probably wouldn't have classmates from from India, from Scotland, from mainland China. Um, here I have that opportunity. Um, and it's funny because sometimes like when we go out for dinner, we just talk about the future, like, hey, after this program, we should all live together, just like the TV show Friends. <laughs> We're still planning on that. We, we're, we really want a Friends lifestyle, the Hong Kong version. <laughs> That with 15 different passport holders in the room, except in Hong Kong, right? <laughs> but probably not, but... <laughs> uh, guys, let's go back to Foon and see what other questions he has from our chat room. Hey, Foon, Hello. anything else? Okay, let's see. Uh, we got another question asking about how is the student community at the JMSC? So maybe Brandon can help answering the question. Uh, who's that question from? Uh, is, is the guest. So. Okay, so we have uh, a guest in the chat room, unnamed. Uh, and Brendan, they want to know what, what the student community is like here. You, you mentioned that a little bit. You guys are friends, and we actually see your, your post on social media. You're out having dinner. Uh, what's yeah. it like on a regular basis? That's the fun part. What about the stressful part? Oh, the stressful part. Um, well, the thing is, when we're stressed out, we stress out together. And. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> we, just, we just go to this restaurant called Ebenezer's and we complain as we're eating our cheese fries, gaining weight. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, it's healthy stress. Um, I, I would say that it's not like, you know, you're, you're not going to be up until four in the morning every single night working. Um, it's not law school. <laughs> it's, uh, but, but, you know, even still, like, um, you're going to have some you know, hard times. Uh, sometimes you're, you're going to worry about deadlines, but, you know, your friends, your professors, they're here to help you and just stay communicative and, you know, ultimately things are going to be okay. Um, but yeah, I think that, I don't know if that's advice, but uh, overall the, the community and the environment is really good. We have one more question that we can go to. Uh, we're kind of running out of time here, guys, but we want to wrap up on, uh, on something good that our chat room wants to hear. So I got a question from Xin Yin. So uh, they're asking, uh, can the students share a memorable moment at the JMSE? Maybe Nancy can help answering the question. Uh, the members of the chat room wants to, to hear about a memorable moment from each of you uh, at the JMSE so far. It could be you know, in the classroom, outside the classroom, personal, anything. You guys want to go first? I got to think. Okay. <laughs> Put them on the spot, right? <laughs> Eleanor, do you have one? I'm still thinking. One second. Like, it could be good or bad, challenging. There were lots of memorable things actually came into my mind currently, but actually the most memorable things is that we make 
we made a video together at the studio uh, in the middle of night. Actually, this was really <laughs> a tough time for me. But actually, we have to meet the deadline and we have to pitch stories in the first time. And we also get the no, pro no reply from the interviewee. <laughs> that is the most confusing things. Why my interviewee didn't reply this kind of things? But finally, we get through that. And uh, thanks a lot for my uh, friends and my team workers. Uh, they really helped me a lot. And after that, just like Brandon said, we have um, strengthened our friendship during this period. <laughs> That's really a memorable thing. I, I think, you know, working as a journalist and, or even just as a student journalist, you have the opportunity to you know, gain a very brief glimpse into someone else's world. And that's one of the reasons why I am in this career field is because, you know, you have so many opportunities to meet people from many walks of life. So, for example, my, my first VNP assignment, I decided to go interview the surfing community here in Hong Kong. Um, you know, ultimately my, my assignment didn't turn out to be the best, but I had a great time. I woke up really early in the morning, I got to like this one surfing spot at like around 5 a.m. I met this really awesome guy from uh, Namibia, and uh, he taught me how to surf, which I didn't expect. I, I was planning on just, uh, you know, getting it on film and having a few like cool, you know, shots, but no. Um, I'm really clumsy, I kept falling off, um, I, I swallowed a lot of salt water, um, but ultimately uh, that day um, not only was it rewarding because I was able to you know, get my first video assignment out, but I also was able to ride a wave successfully. Uh, so it may not be the most memorable experience, but it was a great experience and you know, if you really put yourself out there, then you're going to have experiences like that. I think for me, the most memorable uh, experience here in JMSC is that uh, when I first did my video that I interviewed like a mooncake factory. And actually, that time I actually just make a lot of phone calls to different like bakeries. And I hope that one of them is going to answer me. And then I was feeling so distressed and nearly have a mental breakdown. I don't know who <laughs> is going to answer my call. But then eventually one lady actually accepted it. And then I immediately just rushed out. I remember that night is like 11 p.m. in the afternoon, in the, in the, near the midnight, and then I just don't care, I just carry my camera, and then I just rush it out, and then take the interview, and I drop, I actually drop my, prepare my interview question during the MTR journey, and I feel like it's one of the most memorable experience for me here in JS. That's a great story, too, I remember that, that was one of our better ones, so. Um, Lancy, Brandon, Eleanor, listening to you guys, again, it really makes me proud. I'm sure it does the same for, for Sharon and Diana. Thank you so much for sharing your stories. Um, we definitely could listen to more of them. Unfortunately, we've got to wrap up. Um, guys that are watching us out there, if you have any other questions, feel free to get in touch with any of us uh, through our website. But on behalf of everybody working tonight, spending their Saturday night here in the studio <laughs> rather than somewhere else, Diana, Sharon, hey, everybody in the studio, you want to wave goodbye? Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, hardworking people dedicated to you. Um, so if you like what you heard tonight, um, apply to the program, and hopefully we'll be talking to you in the next month or so. Thanks so much for joining us tonight, guys. Bye-bye.